great pleasure to introduce uh, Suichi Hirahara, who's going to be our first invited speaker. So uh, Suichi is an associate professor at the National Institute of Informatics in Japan. And uh, over the last few years, uh, Suichi has done really fantastic work in meta complexity and uh, proved uh, several breakthrough results connecting worst case complexity, average case complexity, and cryptography. And in particular, providing a new approach to attack this uh, major open problem of the relation between worst case and average case complexity of uh, problems in any case. So uh, again, it's a pleasure to have Suichi. Uh, over to you. Thank you so much for the great introduction, and thank you so much for inviting me. I'm going to talk about meta complexity and average case complexity. So let me start with by explaining what is meta complexity. Informally, meta complexity is a word that refers to complexity of complexity. In order to be more specific, let's consider uh, our favorite complexity measure, namely such complexity. So such complexity of a Boolean function f is the size of a minimum circuit that computes a Boolean function. And we complete this theory, try to find a hard function. But as you know, this is very difficult, and the best current lower bound for um, some explicit, explicit function in P is just 3.1n. So it's very difficult. So it's a good time to take a step back and let's see what's the complexity of computing such complexity. Maybe it's very difficult to compute such complexity, and this question is what is called meta complexity. To be more concrete, let's introduce a rep representative example of a meta computation problem, which is MCSP. MCSP stands for the minimum such size problem, and this is formally um, defined as follows. You are given the true step of a Boolean function, which can be encoded as a string of length 2 to the n, and you are also given a size parameter s, and your task is to decide whether there is a circuit of size at most s that computes the function. Equivalently, this problem asks whether the circuit complexity of a given function is at most s or not. For example, let's take, uh, let's consider the following example. Let's say you are given two bit XOR of two bit function. Um, the true stable of XOR function is just the, out, the concatenation of all the output of the function. So in this case, the true stable is 0, 1, 1, 0. And given such a string, you want to decide what's the such complexity of the function. In this case, you can compute the XOR function by a such that looks like this. So in this case, if you count the number of and or all gates, the such complexity is 3. And this is a very natural question. And this history dates back to as early as the 1950s. And there is a nice survey by Trox Denbrot. But despite the long history, we still don't understand what's the complexity of this problem. It's easy to see that this problem is in NP, but we don't know whether it's NP hard or not. Namely, we don't know whether it's NP complete or not. And so we don't understand the meta complexity of computing such the complexity. Um, MCSP asks to compute such the complexity. So if you consider complexity of MCSP, it amounts to considering um, meta complexity of such the complexity. And what I'm going to talk about today is that this meta complexity, this perspective of meta complexity has an important application to the theory of average case complexity. So by the, by the end of the talk, um, my goal is to convince you that meta complexity has an um, application to average case complexity. That's my goal. So let's um, introduce what is average case complexity next. So in average case complexity, we measure the expected running time over random instances. So usually, if you consider, analyze our algorithm, you often consider worst case complexity. In the worst case complexity, we often we measure the worst input for an algorithm, but this is often too pessimistic. Because, for example, in practice, we can solve NP complete problem quite often efficiently by using practical subsolvers. So 
if you consider worst case complexity, you can't solve it in the worst case, but in practice, you can often solve the problem. And even in theory, several NP complete problems can be efficiently solved on average if you consider natural distributions. For example, if you consider the Hamiltonian fast problem, you can actually solve it in expected linear time if you consider natural um, graph distribution, LDS Lenny random graph. So it's important to understand when a problem becomes hard and when, uh, if you, what distribution you consider. So this motivates the theory of average complexity of NP. And let's introduce a standard notation for average complexity of NP, which was initiated by Levin in 1986. So in average complexity, we would like to understand what's the complexity of a problem with respect to some in input distribution, D. And that pair is called a distribution of problem. A distribution problem is a pair of a decision problem L and a family of input distributions. And then we can introduce an uh, average analog of NP, which is denoted by distributional NP. Distributional NP is a class of distribution problems L and D, such that L is in NP and D is in P sample of distribution. So P samp um, stands for polynomial time sample of distribution. And this is just a distribution where you have a polynomial, randomized polynomial time algorithm that generates a sample according to the distribution. So in other words, we would like to restrict ourselves to a, a polynomial time sample distribution. And then we can introduce an important notion of average case polynomial time, and this is denoted by every GP. And let me mention that there are two equivalent ways of defining average case polynomial time. One is by um, LRS heuristic scheme, and the other is average case polynomial time. But these are equivalent, but in this talk, I will use the idea of average case polynomial time because it's uh, simpler. So we say that the problem, a distribution pro problem is in average P. If you have an algorithm A and a time bound T, that satisfies the following three properties. The first property just says that A is a correct algorithm on every input, so you need to output the L of X on every input. And the second property says that the time bound T is an upper bound of the running time of the algorithm on every input. Thirdly, we require that the expected running time is bounded by polynomial in N. Namely, you take the expectation of X over X drawn from the distribution, and we take T of X, and that should be bounded by polynomial. If you have a good eyes, you might notice that there is a constant epsilon, but for the purpose of this talk, let's forget it. Well, this, we just have epsilon in order to make sure that this definition is robust, but that's not important for this talk. And let me also introduce P computable average polynomial time, which is a natural variant of average polynomial time. So when the upper bound T is computable in polynomial time in the worst case, then we say that it's P computable average polynomial time. And this is denoted by average sub P and P. So this is a natural notion between worst case polynomial time and average case polynomial time. So that's the uh, uh, definition. Any questions so far? Okay, so a big open question in the theory of average case complexity is whether NP, average worst case and average case complexities of NP are equivalent or not. Well, formally, we can consider the following statement. Assuming NP is not equal to P, can we show that distribution of NP is not in P, average P? This is a big open question in the area, and the statement that this NP is not in average P means that you need to find some problem in NP and some distribution, polynomial time sample distribution over instances such that the distribution of problem cannot be solved in average case polynomial time, okay? And in terms of Imparagos five bar, this corresponds to whether we can eliminate the heuristic from Imparagos five bar. And there is a very strong motivation from the theory of cryptography. So in the following slides, I'd like to explain why this is important. 
But before that, let me ask you, how many of you are familiar with Impact Firewall? Raise your hand. Okay, many. Uh, how many of you are not familiar with Impact Firewall? Okay, a couple of you. Um, so let's keep it short. Um, then, so let's try to explain it shortly. So in, in his very influential work, Impagrat proposed five possible words that are consistent with current knowledge. So here you have five words, algorithmic up to cryptomania, and one of them corresponds to our world. For example, algorithmic is a word in which P were equal to NP. In this world, we can't construct a um, secure crypto system, and the rest of the world corresponds to a world in which P not equal to NP. And these are further classified in this way. For example, cryptomania is a world where there is a public key crypto system, but we, um, a common belief is that our world corresponds to cryptomania because they are several candidate construction of public key, but we don't know that's uh, uh, secure or not. And mini crypto is a world where you have a private key crypto, but you don't have public key crypto. And Pessinan is the worst possible world and this is the most pessimistic world in the sense that you can't construct a private key CRISPR system, nor you can solve NP efficiently, even on average. Um, let me briefly mention um, our recent work with Michito Nanashima, um, which shows that this world is most pessimistic, but it's not that bad in the sense that in this world, you can actually solve uh, various tasks of machine learning efficiently on average. Um, for example, you can show that weather forecast can be um, extremely precise in this world, so it's not that bad, but it's, this is not the focus of this talk. And the focus of this talk is a heuristica. So heuristica is a world in which heuristics are quite efficient. So in the sense that this revolution NP is in average P, but P is not equal to NP. So we have five possibilities, and the ultimate goal of complexity theory and the cryptography is to decide which value corresponds to our world. And let me explain what's known about this. So currently, we just have a trivial implication. Namely, if you have a public key crypto system, we can construct private key crypto. And if you have a private key crypto system, you can show that NP is hard on average. And if you can show NP is hard on average, NP is hard in the worst case. And the converse reaction corresponds to a fundamental open question in complexity theory and the cryptography. For example, the bottom arrow means that uh, you need to prove P not equal to NP. And if we can prove this, we can eliminate algorithm from five possible world. Similarly, the second implication corresponds to whether we can exclude heuristic from a five possible world, and this corresponds to worst case to other case reduction for NP. So by proving one implication, we can eliminate one world, and if we can prove all the implication, then we can conclude that our world is cryptomania. Okay, so this is a very fundamental open question, and we have a quite good understanding why it's difficult to resolve. And this cross mark means a barrier result, which says that several types of proof techniques are not sufficient to resolve this open question. For example, in order to resolve P versus NP, we need to come up with proof techniques that are not subject to relativization barrier, algebraization barrier, natural proof barriers, and so forth. So it's important to develop proof techniques. And in order to eliminate the heuristic, we also have a barrier. So we need to come up with a new proof techniques which simultaneously overcomes relativization barrier, limits of black box relation, and the impossibility of hardness amplification. So um, over the last five decade, years, I have been trying to go beyond the limits. And the conclusion what we have now is that if you take each barrier, you can actually go beyond the limits of the proof techniques. For example, if you consider MCSP, we can actually show that worst case and average case compresses are equivalent. And what's important about this result is that this goes beyond the limits of a black box reduction. 
let me explain what limits of black box reduction briefly. So Bogdanov and Trevisan, what they showed is that there is a limit of a proof standard proof technique called black box reduction or just a reduction. And if you want to relate WASP and ABHS complexities, a natural way is to give a construct a reduction. Namely, you want to reduce worst case problem to average case complexity. But what they showed is that any problem, any worst case problem that can be reduced to distribution of NP must be NP slash poly intersection co NP slash poly. And it's believed that NP complete problem are outside of co NP slash poly and also gap MSSP is conjectured to be outside co NP slash poly. So in order to prove this kind of equivalence, we need to use non-black box reductions. And this is the first result that goes beyond the limits of black box reduction. Similarly, by using the idea of metacompressity, we can get a, a new worst case to average case reduction for UP to average case hardness of NP. And this also cannot be proved by standard proof techniques such as black box reduction, nor hardness amplification procedures. So we really need a new types of proof techniques in order to get, improve this kind of result. And finally, we can also go beyond relativizing proof techniques if you consider NP hardness of MCSP star, which is a partial variant of MCSP. So the current state of the art in this line of research is that if you take each barrier, we can go beyond the barrier, but um, in order to eliminate the heuristic, basically we just need to combine them to overcome the barriers simultaneously. So this is, so this is uh, uh, what we would like to talk about today. And in this talk, I would like to explain the second re result in a detail. And for the first result, I would like to explain what kind of proof techniques we use. Okay. And uh, so let's start with the first result. Um, so we can prove uh, worst case and average case compressed of MCSP or equivalent. And the following statement looks like this. So we can prove the following two statements are equivalent. The first statement says that um, MCSP is easy on average. And here MCSP square bracket means that the size parameter is fixed to two to the epsilon n. And we consider U, which is a, stand for the uniform distribution. So the distribution of problem we consider is as follows. You are given a uniformly random string, and you want to decide whether there is a small circuit with size two to the epsilon n that computes the true stable, the, the, the function specified by the uniform random string. That's the distribution problem we consider. And this is equivalent to um, the second statement, namely gap epsilon MCSP is in VPP. Here, gap epsilon MCSP is a problem of approximating such complexity within a factor of two to the one minus epsilon times n. Um, there is a trivial approximation algorithm of approximating such complexity within a factor of two to the n. So this is slightly below the trivial factor, but we can show that this problem, the worst case complexity of this problem is equivalent to average case complexity of MCSP. Okay. And let me explain how we can prove this kind of result. And by doing so, let me introduce a general proof technique to analyze meta complexity. So the proof idea is just one line. The idea is to apply the hardness versus random framework in a meta computational way. That's the proof idea. So let me explain what is a hardness versus randomness framework. So hardness versus randomness framework tells us that if you have a hard function, then you can use it to de-randomize randomize algorithm in polynomial time. For example, um, random mark result in this line of research is due to impact of Wilkerson, which shows that if E requires the circuit of size two to epsilon n for any constant epsilon such as 0 0.01, you can de-randomize BPP in polynomial time. And 
how can we prove this? Well, the proof is based on a pseudo random, the notion of pseudo random generator. Namely, um, the pseudo random generator secure against linear size circuit satisfies the following property. Any linear size circuit cannot distinguish the pseudo random distribution from the uniform distribution. More formally, if you consider the probability that C outputs one with respect to the pseudo random sequence, um, is approximate or equal to the probability that C outputs one with respect to the uniform distribution. This is the idea of a pseudo random generator. And once we have such a pseudo random generator, we can derandomize the BPP as follows. The left hand side can be computed in polynomial time because there are at the most polynomial many seed, so you can enumerate all possible z in polynomial time. On the other hand, the right hand side has the power to simulate BPP. So in this way, once you have a, such a pseudo-random generator, generator, you can show that BPP equals P. And this is denoted by um, comp this um, approximate equal subscript C, and we say that G is computationally indistinguishable from the uniform distribution. And the proof technique is often actually quite general, and you, not only pseudo-random generator, you can actually get a pseudo-random generator construction, which plays an important role. So what a pseudo-random generator construction is uh, that given any hard function f, uh, which cannot be computed by small circuit, you can in general, convert it into a pseudo random generator G to the A. That's a pseudo random generator construction. So let's see how this notion is useful in analyzing a very case compressor of meta complexity. So, first, um, in your traditional hardness versus random framework, we apply this pseudo random generator construction to a fixed hard function. Namely, in order to prove imperative with a theorem, we just apply a pseudo random data construction to a fixed hard function that is granted to, to exist in E, and you get a pseudo random data that can be computed in polynomial time. In this way, you can show that BPP equals P. But now let's view this framework in a meta computational way. So Instead of applying hardness versus random framework to a fixed hard function, we regard f as an input to a meta computation problem. Namely, in our case, we apply to a MCSP. And then we can actually regard the pseudo random generator construction as a worst case to other case reduction. Let me explain why this is the case at a high level. So in order to show that this is a reduction for MCSP, we need to show that every no instance is mapped to no instance for MCSP. But by using uh, the property of a pseudo generator, if you take every no instance, this is mapped to a pseudo random sequence that is computationally indistinguishable from the uniform distribution. And by a Shannon's counting argument, you can easily show that um, if you regard the uniform distribution as an input to MCSP, this is a no instance. Namely, you don't have a small circuit with high probability. So every no instance is mapped to no instance for MCSP. So this is a self reduction for MCSP. But not only that, this can be regarded as a worst case to other case reduction. Because I haven't made any um, assumption about no instances. So you can actually reduce worst case instance to average case instance or pseudo random instance in the sense that this is computationally indistinguishable from the uniform distribution. So basically we are reducing worst case instance to average case instance. In order to show that this is a correct reduction, we also need to argue about the yes case, but this basically follows from the fact that uh, for some pseudo random data construction, if F is a sm has a small circuit, you can show that G to the F has also small circuit. And this is the idea of getting a uh, worst case to average case reduction. More formally, we can show by making this argument formal, we can show that if MCSP is easy on average, then MCSP can be 
approximated in the worst case. Any questions so far? Okay, that's the idea of the proof. Oh yeah. Sorry? Oh, yeah, so this result goes beyond the limits of black box reduction. And the reason why this is non-black box is that here this um, closeness is just for a computationally um, indistinguishable. So if you have a small algorithm, then you can show that the small algorithm cannot distinguish the random distribution from the uniform distribution. So this worst case abacus reduction only works for efficient algorithm. And the Bogdan and Trivedan shows is that if it's black box in the sense that you don't exploit the efficiency of an algorithm, then you have a black box reduction barrier. So in that sense, this is non-black box. Thank you for the question. Um, no, um, we can, well, we can show that you, if you take a uniform distribution, it's with high probability no instance, and you need to relate, first relate the, the probability that the um, algorithm accepts by using this inquiry. Yeah, well, in the next result, I will explain more detail, so yeah, hopefully it makes it clear. Okay, so um, in the next result, I would like to, ex by using this kind of idea, we can get a new worst case to have a case connection, and hopefully I will explain more details. So we can actually ex exclude a strong variant of heuristic R in the following sense. If NP requires the time compression of two to n by log n, we can actually show that this NP cannot be solved on average. Here, N denotes the length of inputs, which can be encoded as a binary string. And the notion of average is compressive here is actually not standard, and we need to consider P computable average for in time, which we introduced before. So remember that P computable average for in time is a class of algorithm whose um, running time can be estimated in the sense that the time bound can be computed in worst case. You might think that this is a bit cheating because this is a new notion which we introduced, but there is an evidence that this is somehow close to the standard notion. And if we consider our average case compressive of pH, we can actually show that average case compressive, uh, P computable average case polynomial time and standard notion of average case polynomial time are actually equal. So in this case, in this sense, P computable average case polynomial time is close to the original notion. And in the case of pH, we have a much cleaner result, which shows that if pH requires the time compressive two to the order n by log n, then pH is hard on average. And if we consider a subclass of NP, we can also show that if UP requires two to the order n by log n, then we can prove NP is hard on average with respect to the standard notion of average as polynomial time. So that's what we can prove. And let me mention that the last result cannot be proved by standard proof techniques such as hardness and application procedure, nor black box reductions. So we re in order to prove these results, we really need a new ideas. And the idea is to use meta complexity. So let me explain how we can prove this result. Um, so um, as an example, let's consider the worst case to average case reduction for pH. And let's explain how we can prove this result. So first, let's take the contour positive. So we start from the assumption that pH is easy on average. And then we'd like to get the worst case algorithm. That's our goal. 
And the statement has nothing to do with average meta complexity, and it's purely about worst case and average case complexity, but the proof goes through the idea of worst case meta complexity. And the first step is to prove several results about time bounded Coleman complexity, which is algorithm Lange's compression, which I will explain later, and the symmetry of information, which I actually talked in the last year. And then we construct an efficient algorithm called a universal heuristic scheme. And that's how we prove this result. And let me mention that if you have a universal heuristic scheme, you can also construct P computable abacus polynomial time algorithm. So, um, and if you have a such an algorithm, you can also get a standard notion. So in this way, you can also get an equivalence between P computable abacus polynomial time and the standard notion of abacus polynomial time. Um, so let me start by explaining what is algorithmic Lange compression. And in order to do that, I need to define what is time bounded Coleman complexity. So the T time bounded Coleman complexity of a string X is denoted by K super, super security T of X. And this is defined as the length of a shortest program that prints X in time, time T. Um, let me give you a couple of examples in order to make sure that you are familiar with this. So let's consider T time bounded column complexity of all zero string of length n. And you can describe all zero string by a program that says print zero n times. And the binary representation of this program costs you log n bits in order to encrypt, encode n. So the Colbon complexity is log n plus constant. And more generally, for any string x, you can consider a program that says print x. And the, you can show that time bounded Colbon complexity is always bounded by the length of a string plus constant. And this bound is actually tight. If you consider by a simple counting argument, you can show that the time, the Colbon complexity of x is at least n minus two if you pick a uniformly random string x with a high probability. Okay, so there is a fundamental um, property of columnar complexity, which is called Lange's compression. Lange's compression states that for any decidable language and any string in the language, we can bound columnar complexity by log of the length, log of the size of the ranges plus order of t. And the reason why we have this is quite simple. We basically, if we assume that this is a decidable language, we can enumerate all the members of the language, and we can hard code the index for x. And the pro we can consider the program that outputs the ith element of Lt, and the binary encoding of i costs you log of the size of so this is a very, very simple fact, but this is at the same time very useful fact. And algorithm Lange compression says that we can actually give a meta computational proof of Lange compression. That's what it says. More formally, we can prove the following. Assume that NP is easy on average, and let's say L is a Lange in NP then we can show that there is a polynomial time algorithm that decides a promise problem. Namely, you can separate yes instances from no instances. And yes instances consist of uh, strings which is in L, and no instances consist of uh, strings whose time bounded column compressed is large. And this result generalizes time bounded range compression and worst case to abacus reduction, which we saw before. And let me explain why this is a generalization. So um, let's explain the relations to time bounded range compression. So we can naturally consider time bounded variant of range compression, namely for any range in NP and for any string X in the range, we'd like to bound the time bounded column compression of X by the log of the size of the range. And we can immediately, once we prove this algorithmic language compression, we can immediately get it as a corollary. 
Namely, this result says that we can separate, there is a polynomial time algorithm that separates yes instances from no instances. And by just using the fact that yes instances and no instances are separate, we get this corollary. Because if you take any x in the language, this is in the yes instances. So yes instance it must not be in the no instance. So we can negate this statement, and that's why you get this corollary. So basically, language compression says that yes instances and no instances can be separated. But not only that, this result tells you that there's a polynomial time algorithm that separates yes instances and no instances. And actually, this polynomial time algorithm can be seen as a worst case to other case reduction for mean KT. Um, mean KT is a problem of computing time bounded to Coleman complexity. And as a corollary, we get a worst case to other case reduction for not MS for MCC, but for this uh, mean KT. The reason is that if you apply ran algorithmic language compression to this language, namely the language consi that consists of strings whose time bound column complex is small, um, we can get a polynomial time algorithm that decides gap mean KT. And the gap mean KT is a following problem. Yes, instances consists of strings whose time bounded column complex is small, and no instances consists of time bounded column complex whose column complex is large. So this is an approximation problem for time bounded column complexity. So let's see how to, we can prove this result. Actually, the proof is exactly the same as before. And basically, the only difference is that what kind of um, pseudo-random generator construction we use. And the particular pseudo-random generator construction we use is very simple. And we call it a k-wise direct product generator, which is denoted by dp sub k. And this is a very simple function which takes x and z1 up to zk, which can be regarded as a seed. And you output z1 up to zk themselves. And you also output the inner product between zi and x modulo 2. So this is a very simple function. And you can regard this as a pseudo-random generator construction based on the true stable x, which represents some hard function. More specifically, we have the following pseudo-randomness property. Um, previously, we considered a circuit complexity. And we considered that if the circuit complexity of a function is hard, then it's pseudo-random. But here, let's consider time-bounded column complexity. And we have the following property. If the string has large time-bounded column complexity, if it's at, most, at least k plus order log n, then we can show that direct product, the output of the direct product generator is computationally indistinguishable from the uniform distribution. Um, more formally, uh, for any polynomial time algorithm D, the probability that D outputs one is approximately close to the probability that D outputs one with respect to the uniform distribution. And let me quickly mention that K plus order log n here is called advice complexity, and this is actually nearly optimal. So by using this nearly optimal construction, um, let's explain how to prove um, algorithmic language compression. So this is a reminder of the statement. Namely, we'd like to prove that if NP is easy on average, and if L is in NP, we'd like to solve uh, some promise problem. That's our goal. And the proof is exactly the same as before. So basically what we would like to do is to construct a reduction from this worst case problem to some average case problem in distribution and NP. So we would like to construct a reduction from this problem to distribution and NP. And this inequality means that we construct a reduction. And I haven't defined what is L prime, but let's see what L prime should be. So the reduction is the same as before. So instead of a pseudo general pseudo-random generator construction, we use direct product generator as a reduction. 
So given our worst case instance x, we map, we take our random seed z, and we map it to dp of x and z. That's the reduction. And the property we want for this reduction is that if you have a yes instance, it should be mapped to yes instance for L prime. So a natural choice for L prime should be the image of the of L and the direct product generator. So we can naturally define L prime to be the set of dp of x where x is in the language. And you can easily show that this is in NP, and if we define this way, it's clear that this property is satisfied. So yes instance is mapped to yes instance. Now we also need to argue about the no case. And in the no case, we are guaranteed that you have a high time bounded column of complexity. So by the property of a direct product generator, it's computationally indistinguishable from the uniform distribution. And if we set the parameter k to be sufficiently large, um, if it's larger than log of the size of the language, we can make sure that with respect to the uniform distribution, it's with high probability no instance for L prime because the image must be small. So in this way, we can map no instances to no instances to L prime and in order to complete the reduction, we need to explain how to uh, convert average case algorithm B for L prime with respect to the uniform distribution to an um, algorithm A that solves pi in the worst case. And the definition of an algorithm looks like this. Uh, A accepts if and only if B accepts a direct product generator or B does not hold in polynomial time. Remember that this is an average case polynomial time, so it might not hold in polynomial time. And once we define it, um, we can show that in the yes case, you can show that uh, with the probability one, A accepts. And in the no case, we can use the fact that um, B is an efficient algorithm that works with respect to the uniform distribution. So with respect to the uniform distribution, it holds in polynomial time, so we can show that no instance is rejected by this algorithm. So that's the um, proof, actually the whole proof of the result. Okay, so we have proved how to get this implication, especially for algorithm language compression. Next, let me explain uh, what is universal Curie scheme, which is a very important notion in this work. So universal Curie scheme is an algorithm that runs in time two to time bounded column of complexity x minus poly of t time bounded column of complexity of x. That's the definition, but let me make it more precise. So there is a very important notion called computational depth, which is very simple. Just it's the difference between t time bounded column of complexity of x and column of complexity of x. And we can naturally generalize it to TS time bounded column of complexity. Uh, sorry, T time bounded, TS time bounded computational depth. So this is just a difference between T time bounded column of complexity and S time bounded column of complexity. And now we can define a universal Curie scheme for a language L. So a universal Curie scheme A takes X as well as a parameter T. And the first condition says that A must compute the correct answer on every input. And moreover, A must hold in time two to the order of computational depth time. That's the definition of universal scheme. And once we have a, such a universal series scheme, you can easily show that you get a worst case algorithm that runs in two to the order n by log n. And the proof idea is quite simple. Basically, you just try to find the parameter t so that the input becomes computationally shallow in the sense that the computational depth is at the most n by log n. And that's why you get two to the order n by log n. And let's prove this. Well, we just consider a telescoping sum for computational depth. So you start from t time bounded 
T and P of T computational depth of X. And next we consider P of T, P of P of T computational depth of X and so forth. This, this is a telescoping sum. You get the first term and the last term which remains. And the second term can be bounded by zero from below and the first term is bounded by N plus constant. So if you add up uh, log N uh, quantity terms, you get N. So there must exist I such that computation depth is at the most N by log N. And remember that universal theory scheme runs in two to the order of computation depth time. So this naturally motivates the following algorithm. You, you run a universal theory scheme in parallel for different parameters and you take the first one that holds and output what it outputs. And you can easily show that because universal theory scheme runs in two to the order of computation depth time, you can show that this algorithm runs in two to the order environment. That's how we get this algorithm. So we have explained how to get this and how to get this and what remains is to this. But uh, the proof is not so difficult, but at the same time, it's not intuitive. So let's skip it. And instead, well, let's explain, at least let's explain how to construct a universal heuristic scheme. So instead of this, I'm going to explain this part, uh, which is easier to understand and it's more intuitive. So what I'm claiming is that if you have a P computable average point in time, then you get a universal heuristic scheme. So the proof idea is quite simple. You have a hard instances for which your algorithm takes super polynomial time and you apply time bounded to Lange's compression to the set of hard instances. So more formally, let A be a P computable average polynomial time algorithm with time bound T. And let's consider the set of hard instances which is denoted by F sub S. So this is a pictorial image. So you have a, the set of instances and there are tiny set of instances that cannot be solved efficiently. Let's say, let's take a parameter S and let's say this is a set of instances whose time bound is at least S. So this set is guaranteed to be very small. So we can apply a range compression, time bounded range compression to show that for any hard instance, the time bounded column complexity is small. We can bound this by N minus log S. Actually, this bound is not good if you consider a uniform distribution. But instead of a uniform distribution, we can consider so-called time term bounded universal distribution. I, have, I will not explain this, but by considering a different distribution, we can improve this to uh, tau time bounded column complexity. And uh, then you can rearrange this inequality and you get a lower bound for computational depth. And if you take the contrapositive of this statement, if you have a upper bound for time bounded column complexity, time bounded computational depth, you can show that it's not in the hard instances. So the, we can negate this statement and that's how you get the upper bound for the running time. So this means that this algorithm A is actually universal heuristic scheme in the sense that it runs in two to the order of computational depth time. So yeah, the idea should be simple. So we have explained a couple of results and I hope you have convinced this result. Namely, we can exclude a strong variant of heuristic curve. As I explained just now, we can apply time bounded language compression for hard instances to get a universal heuristic scheme. And by using a telescoping sum, you can get a worst case algorithm that runs in two to the order in by log n. And finally, the key part is that you get the worst case the average reduction, which can be obtained by applying direct product of generator. Okay, that's uh, basically a technical part. And in the rest of my talk, I would like to explain a couple of remarks. 
So it's natural to ask whether we can improve the running time to the order n by log n further. Um, if we consider a quasi-linear time adversary, we can actually improve it. Namely, if up requires the time compressive two to the square root of n, we can show that non-deterministic linear time cannot be solved in quasi-linear time. But if you consider relativizing proof techniques, actually you can't improve the running time. So we can construct an oracle under which up is very hard, cannot be solved in two to the n by log n, but ph is easy on average. So in order to go beyond, we need a non-relativizing proof. Actually, the original proof was non-relativizing, but the subsequent work by Goldberg, Kavanet, Lu, and Oliveira shows that there's a relativizing proof for randomized variance. So we need to come up with a non-relativizing proof techniques in order to go beyond. So the next major st step would be to go beyond relativization barriers. Remember that we have two important barriers, black box reductions and relativizing barrier. And for black box reductions barrier, we can go beyond by using worst case average reduction for MCSP. And the natural way to go beyond is to show NP completeness of MCSP, which is a major open question in the area. Um, we haven't been able to achieve this, but we have uh, we come somewhat close in the sense that if you consider a partial variant of MCSP, uh, which is denoted by MCSP star, we can actually prove that it's NP hard. And this is actually cannot be proved by relativizing proof techniques. So this goes beyond the um, limits of relativizing proof techniques. So what remains is to bridge the gap between partial uh, version of MCSP and the total version of MCSP. If we can do that, we can combine these implications to admit the heuristic. So let me explain what is partial MCSP. Um, partial MCSP is just a, a version of MCSP in which you are given a partial function instead of a total function. So in, our se in our several entries are start, which means that we don't care the output of the circuit. And the task is to decide whether there is a circuit that computes f of x on every input in the domain of the function. And this problem is in, in NP, and recently we showed that this is NP complete under randomized reductions. And we can also pr prove NP hardness of a partial variant of min kt, which we can denote by min kt star. This is a problem of computing a partial variant of uh, time bounded column complexity. So instead of a, a st standard string, you are given a partial string in which several entries are start. And the task is to decide whether there is a standard string that is consistent with X and the time bounded column complexity of total string is small. And the proof techniques of proving NP hardness of MCSP star is quite general, and we can also prove NP hardness of this problem as well. And if we could extend this NP hardness to the standard version of min KT, we can rule out heuristic. Um, finally, let me mention whether we really need to use metacompressity or not. In some sense, we need to use metacompressity because in several cases, we get an equivalence. For example, in the case of a pH, we can exactly characterize a compressive pH by using worst case metacompressity of a min kt. Uh, this gap min kt to the pH is a problem of approximating pH oracle time bounded column complexity. So in some sense, we need to use the idea of metacompressity. And we can also um, characterize one function by a NP hardness of a certain metacomputation problem, which we call DK. And this is the distributional column of complexity, uh, which is uh, defined here, but let's skip that. So anyway, um, this shows that in order to eliminate the heuristic and the patient, we need to really prove NP hardness of metacomputation problem. So in summary, um, Metacompressive is a powerful tool to analyze average case compressive. I hope I convinced you. 
And its barrier, if you take its barrier, you can overcome the barriers, but what remains to combine them to overcome the barriers simultaneously. And currently, we don't know why it's difficult. Thank you so much for your attention. Yeah, um, in the case of um, MCSP, you can also show uh, non-uniform adversary as well. So, um, sorry, this is finished. Um, basically, in the case of uh, worst case advocacy reduction for MCSP, we have a very big gap. So this actually applies for uh, PSAS poly as well. So we haven't used any non-uniform uh, uniformity here, but in the case of this result, um, I don't, I don't think this applies to PSAS for you. Yeah, that's an interesting question. Um, so if I understand correctly, the definition of advocacy is for like errorless heuristics. Right. Um, and this was the expected uh, the running time. Right. Is what, uh, are there any ways to connect the meta complexity to Um, well, if you consider the past result, you can uh, relate um, meta complexity, error, error prone average case complexity of uh, meta complexity to Bauman function. But um, if, you con if you want to relate worst case complexity to two sided error version of average case complexity, we don't know how to do that. Um, if you have an instant checker, we can. Uh, collapse LRS and error prone average case compresses, but currently we don't know how to do that. 